part two of this video series on the Mafika Lesui Pass covers the second steeper half of the western ascent. The Sutu combine modern and traditional ways, providing continuity in a society that is disrupted by a system of migratory labor. Although undermined by political developments since independence in 1966, traditional authority is still exercised through a system of chieftaincy extending from the king through the chiefs to the village level. The chiefs are largely responsible for the working and distribution of land, although in certain areas this authority has been curtailed by the Land Act of 1979. The contradictions created by Lesotho's lack of economic independence in the face of political independence are reflected in the cultural life of the country. Despite increasing urbanization and the growth of modern institutions and bureaucracy, many Sutu are still interested in building a rural homestead and perpetuating traditional institutions. They also remain loyal to the chieftaincy system. Institutions, such as initiation schools, which perpetuate traditional values, are still significant but are changing in structure. Urban life here is a blend of traditional and western culture. In Masiru, there are shops and markets that offer regional crafts and goods, as well as modern and western hotels, restaurants and nightclubs. Many buildings, however, were burned or damaged by looting following the general election of 1998. The city also contains urban villages where tourists can experience traditional life in Lesotho. Village life centers largely on the fields, the chief's court, the kraals, the school, the church and the initiation lodge. Circumcision forms an integral part of the ritualized initiation ceremonies that train boys to take their place as full members of the family, clan and nation, the three centers of social cohesion. Many young boys spend a large part of their lives as herdsmen, whilst women and young girls do much of the hard work in the fields. Because of the sharp variations in climate, both men and women wear blankets, often multicolored, which they use as cloaks. Men and women also wear the typical Sutu hat, which is woven from reeds into conical shapes and has a decorative topknot. Village life is dominated by basic agricultural tasks with heavy responsibilities falling on the women. Craft work is still practiced in the villages and includes pottery, grass weaving, notably of traditional Sutu hats, and the painting of elaborate decorations on the walls of their houses. Herders play a traditional musical instrument called the lesiba, a stringed and wind instrument consisting of a string and feather on which the musician blows. Dances, such as the Gambu dance, demonstrate the influence of migrant labor on traditional forms of cultural expression. The more traditional Moho Bello is a men's stomping dance that consists of synchronized movements and high kicks. Women, on the other hand, perform their own dance by kneeling in a lion and beating the ground with their knees. The Sutta culture enjoys a rich tradition of oral literature that is given expression in folk songs, proverbs, jokes, myths and legends. The historical traditions and legacy of Moshua Shwe Wan remain strong and there is national pride in Lesotho's history of resistance, in the role of the Sutu in building modern Southern Africa and in the achievements of such writers as Thomas Mofolo. The beautifully engineered hairpin bend comes into view at the 11 kilometer mark. A lot of engineering expertise went into its construction. 
don't stop and take a photo of it as you could cause a dangerous situation for other road users. A big safe view site is just a little further at a higher elevation and which gives an excellent view of the hairpin. Be aware that large trucks will need to encroach onto the wrong side of the road to negotiate this bend. Please give them right of way, it's the smart thing to do. Black and white vertical poles that can be seen on both sides of the road are there to indicate the depth of the snow. You have to pull off the road and drive along a short access road to reach the view site which has ample space for about 50 vehicles. Be prepared for cold weather up there as the wind tends to funnel through the neck and it does get bitterly cold. The altitude at the summit is 3091 meters which is considerably higher than any pass in South Africa. Be sure to watch part 3 of the Mafika Lesui Pass.